Hey, this is Judge and Waits, and this is part one of my series where I take a look at the game Darksiders 2. In Darksiders 2, you play as Death, one of the legendary four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I'm going to get right into the cutscenes, though, so that you can figure out what's going on with this game. There can be no life without order. Good, evil, darkness, light. There must be balance in the universe. Such is the decree of the Charred Council, an ancient body charged by the Creator to preserve the very fabric of existence. But the balance has been broken. Even now, Earth smolders in ruin, fallen to the Demon Lords, and the Destroyer carves a new kingdom amongst his mighty chosen. Some say the Horseman War triggered the Apocalypse, that he rode to Earth unbidden and doomed all of mankind. But what of the other horsemen, fearless enforcers of the Council's will? What of fury, strife, and death? To know those names, you must first know another. Nephilim, cursed union of angel and demon. The Nephilim countless realms preserved and burned them to ash. But four amongst them grew weary in the slaughter and feared their conquest would imperil the balance. And so a truce was made. The Four would serve the Council in exchange for unimaginable power. Thus were the dreaded horsemen formed, and the Rider's first task was to purge their own brethren from creation, to annihilate the Nephilim and destroy their souls. Let us now cast our gaze to one amongst the four. Not war, who lies chained at the Council's feet, professing his innocence, but one who would save his brother above all else. He has many names. Kinslayer, Executioner, freedom. Death swore that he would resurrect humanity. But he knew not how this might be done. And so death rode forth into the icy veil to find the keeper of secrets. Alright, so just to fill you in, Darksiders 1, you played as War, one of the other four horsemen of the Apocalypse. Now, War is accused of starting basically Armageddon, the battle between the demons and the angels in this video game. And humanity was kind of caught in the middle and kind of almost wiped out. So as you start that game, War doesn't know exactly what happened, why he was called back, why he started the apocalypse, or even if he did. So he spends the game trying to figure all that out and find out who's actually behind all of it. And he's kind of stripped of his powers, so he has to kind of level himself up and, you know, kind of uh, get back his swagger, if you will. Now, as you saw in the cutscenes, Death and the other two horsemen of the Apocalypse, they learn about what happened to their brother. And so Death kind of sets out to kind of help out his brother and do what he can do. So he's going to find the Keeper of the Secrets right now because the Keeper of the Secrets has all the secrets and maybe he can help him out. So far I'm about a couple hours into the game and I'm seeing a lot of similarities between Darksiders 1. You have that hack and slash feel but it's kind of more than that. And in fact Death, he is kind of more a finesse fighter where War, he was kind of all out in your face just going to take it to him. You cannot do that with Death. You have to really use the dodge aspect and really be careful with him. He just seems more fragile but it kind of makes it more interesting that way. Of course the puzzles are still there and the customization is there and in fact they've stepped that up. 
now you can really customize death he can either be kind of a hand-to-hand -hand guy or like a sorcerer type guy where he summons things and everything like that there's also a loot system now when you kill people sometimes they'll drop like weapons and armor and you've got that whole aspect where you are putting on gloves boots you know chain mail armor everything plus you're picking up tons of different weapons when they go down and you have those treasure chests that you had to find all over there see there's a pair of boots like like I was talking about but you have those treasure chests that have you know things that you can get uh, so there's all those different things that were in the game plus much much more customization and here's that inventory thing where you can see you know I've got my scythe equipped I don't have any secondary weapons and the only thing I picked up is uh, a pair of boots right there I'll show you more about the inventory and the menus as we go along but here's a secondary weapon that you can pick up now I like the first game where you had the weapon and then you kind of specialized it in this game you actually just pick up a bunch of different weapons and they all have different stats so you gotta kinda compare them and everything like that and you can sell them for money and buy them so you're kinda getting that whole RPG thing and here's a skill tree that I was talking about on the left is the Harbringer he's more a hand-to-hand -hand, and on the right is a necromancer you know kind of more the sorcery raise people from the dead you know your minions for you or you can kind of combine them and go you know both routes now as far as fighting if you use your X button you use your primary weapon and the Y button is the secondary weapon and of course there's combos that you can use with you know by pressing both buttons together and you can jump and you can learn things and everything like that just like with the first game Alright, so we're coming up on the Dark Fortress, and if you'll notice, I've got a little bird with me, and he kind of points out which direction I need to be going for the main quest. So you want to pay attention to him, and you can actually send him out. Now in this first quest, or this first area, it's all about learning how to maneuver death, and he's got some new tricks that War didn't have to get around in different areas, so it's pretty cool so far. As you're going to see here, he can actually run around the wall like. Now, it takes a little bit getting used to, as with the first one. There were a couple of times, and I just barely made that jump, but there were a couple of times where I was trying to do things and I actually fell down, and so it got a little annoying there for a minute, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I'm also sure that there's going to be things that can aid you, like that grappling hook he had in the first one. I'm sure there's going to be something similar to that with this one because I'm already already seeing areas that I can't get to right now obviously too this is third person so you're gonna have those issues with the camera that can get a little bit annoying but they're really not that bad in this game I'm also really impressed so far with the sound and the music in this game and as you can see the graphics aren't too shabby as well now I fast forward here because I didn't want you to get bored seeing all the different moves and I wanted to show you a little bit more of the fighting that goes on. Now this is just battling some more minions, but you can see the different combos and how the, the action actually takes place. Of course you're playing as death so you're going to see a little bit of that reaper form come out. But there you get to see what it's like with hand-to-hand -hand with the little minion guys. Now I'm going to fast forward again and show you what it's like with like one of the first bosses that you face.
as you can see from that boss fight though you can really see the the finesse that death has and I think they did a good job distinguishing death from war in the first Darksiders but this is where I'm gonna end the video right around in here hope you like it make sure if you wanna see more that you subscribe and you stay tuned I should be releasing more videos pretty regularly on this if by chance you're new to my videos, I make it a point not to swear or put any garbage in these videos. That way you can watch them in front of other people and not have to worry about that. But let me know what you guys think of this. As always though, take care and God bless.